This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is wonderful to be in worship with you at First Ozark this morning for those of us here in person and for those of us joining online and on the radio. A few announcements to make you aware of today. First is that we are in prayer for all of those affected by the most recent hurricane. And today during communion, any offerings placed on the altar will be donated to UMCOR for hurricane relief. Also, this evening, we will be having our Claybank Remembrance Service in the chapel at 5 p.m., and all are welcome to join for this service. A little bit later in October, on October 22nd, is Make a Difference Day. So we will meet at the Baptist Church in the morning, uh, disperse to various volunteer projects, and then come back to First Ozark for lunch. And on October 30th at 4.30 p.m., we will have our Kingsley CLC groundbreaking, uh, which is a wonderful step forward in uh, building the new building, and we hope you join us there as well. As we continue in worship today, let us prepare our hearts as we hear this prelude. Let us join together in our mission statement, printed in your bulletin. Our mission, to be an obedient community of faith, believing, praising, and loving God as revealed in Jesus Christ, as we respect, encourage, and serve our neighbors. Please rise for our hymn of praise, Lift High the Cross, number 159.
Let us affirm our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. As our ushers come forward to receive our tithes and offerings, let us ask God's blessings on these gifts. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the many good gifts you have given us. With these gifts we give to you today with joyous hearts, we pray that they might be a blessing to our church and to our community and to our world, that all might come to know of your great love. In Christ's name, amen.
for hymn preparation. This is a day of new beginnings. Hymn number 383. Let us listen as we go to God in prayer. Lord, you are a rock and salvation. In the midst of the storms of life, you are a refuge and strength. Lord, our hearts go out to those who have been devastated by Hurricane Ian. We pray for those who have lost so much of lives and homes, and we pray for the relief work going on. Grant energy and strength to relief workers. Grant those who are victims peace, which passes all understanding. Lord, you are our hope. You are our peace. You are all in all. Lord, we are so grateful for your sacrifice, that your body was broken, that your blood was shed for the forgiveness of all our sins. Unite us as your people, brothers and sisters in Christ, and send us out on mission for you, to care for those in need, to listen to those who are hurting, to encourage those who are discouraged. Lord, how we need the power of your Spirit. Change us, mold us, help us to be the people you've called us to be. May we commune with you today as we participate in the Lord's Supper. Help us to be the people that you've called us to be for such a time as this. And we will give you the honor and the glory and the praise. For it's in Christ's name we ask. Amen.
Thank you, David. Thank you, choir. Our scripture for today comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting in verse 20 through verse 26. And the word of God says there, When you come together, it is not really to eat the Lord's Supper. For when the time comes to eat, each of you goes ahead with your own supper, and one goes hungry and another becomes drunk. What? Do you not have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you show contempt for the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What should I say to you? Should I commend you? In this matter, I do not commend you. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Melanie. Participating in the Lord's Supper, Dr. Ken McFadden, a professor at Union Theological Seminary, he shares his story. He accepted the call to Presbyterian Church in the Richmond area. It was his first Sunday, and so, the family was in a hurry, rushing around. They got to church, and they were sharing the Lord's Supper. Well, Ken's son, Eric, four years old at the time, he wanted to help out. So he had the plate with the bread on it, and he was holding it rather precariously, and he dropped it. And the bread went everywhere on the floor. Well, he went down to his knees and began to put the bread, shove it in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's the look that his dad gave him. He was just in shock. Son, what are you doing? And he shoved some more in his mouth and he said, but dad, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Do we come hungry this morning to be fed by the living Christ? Come just the way you are, all who are weary and heavy laden, and he will feed us, Jesus at this special meal, it is a means of grace, a means on which we experience the wonder, the power, the mystery of our Lord's presence with us. And today, we have the privilege to reflect upon what Christ has done for us as we consider anew our passage. We think about the meaning, the privilege, and the results of sharing together in holy communion. Do you know about the text and What's involved here? Well, I'll be glad to tell you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, those who were wealthy, they could arrive early. Those who were poor and those who were slaves, they had to work a full day. So by the time they got there, all the bread was eaten, all the wine was drunk. And so, instead of it being a time of unity, a time to build up and to strengthen the church, it was a time of division. They were not thinking about one or the other. They were going ahead and getting drunk, being gluttonous there at the Lord's table. And Paul writes this to the church at Corinth. In contrast, today is a very special day, World Communion Sunday. Melanie, what can you tell us about World Communion Sunday? You're right, Jason. Today is World Communion Sunday. And in contrast to the Corinthians, whose practice of the Lord's Supper served to highlight the unequal differences between them, on World Communion Sunday, churches all over the world celebrate the Lord's Supper and remember that ultimately, all who worship the Lord Jesus Christ are one. Even in the midst of all our differences, we're called to be one. 
And so today, alongside churches from Kenya and Korea and Ozark, Alabama, with people who have retirement funds fully funded and folks who don't know where their next meal will come from, with Baptists and Methodists and Episcopals and Presbyterians and everyone in between, today we all come to the Lord's table and we remember and practice Christian unity because we remember the words of Jesus who prayed that we all might be one as he and the Father are one. Jason, what can you tell us about the meaning of the Lord's Supper? Well, well, the meaning of this special meal, it goes back to the time of Moses when the Israelites were captive there in Egypt and a number of plagues came upon the Egyptians, until finally, the last plague of all, the death of their firstborn. And God told Moses to smear sheep's blood on the doorpost, and the death angel would pass over their homes. God delivered his people. So each year, the Jewish people were to gather in Jerusalem and to share the Passover meal, the Lord's Supper. This holy meal dates back to the time of the Jews when they shared the Passover. God delivered his people. And this reminds us in a special way, Jesus, he is our deliverer. And he has delivered us from sin and death. This bread, it speaks to us the meaning of his broken body for the forgiveness of our sins. This cup This fruit of the vine, it shares the message of his shed blood for the forgiveness of our sins. We share together this bread in the cup, celebrating our Lord's deliverance. Melanie, the meaning of this special meal, it has a lot to say with the privilege of sharing together. Yes, because of God's great grace and mercy, we have the privilege of sharing together in the Lord's Supper. And we have the privilege of remembering God's great love for us. God loved humanity and all of creation so much that to right the relationship between God and us, God became flesh and dwelled among us. And Jesus loved us all the way through the great sorrow of the crucifixion. And Jesus continues to love us all the way through the great joy of the resurrection and the gift of eternal life that we are given. It reminds me of that great verse from John 3.16. Say it with me if you remember it today. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What joy, what grace, what privilege. We are all invited to share the Lord's Supper together. All are invited to and are welcome alongside everyone else on this planet. Now, Tom Long shares a story of a woman who really understood the great privilege it was to share the Lord's Supper. He was part of a church in downtown Atlanta at a fairly well-to-do congregation. And around the church grounds, there were often people who were experiencing homelessness hanging around. It took some time, but eventually the church had the idea, hey, maybe we should invite these people in to come and worship with us. Now, this also took some time. It took time to build relationship. It took time to work up the nerve to ask. It took time for people to feel comfortable enough to accept the invitation to come in. But eventually they did, and so homeless people and people who went home to a warm house every night came together and worshipped the Lord Jesus Christ. On one day, the pastor was speaking beautifully and eloquently about the gift of the Lord's Supper, and there was a woman sitting in the balcony, someone who was experiencing homelessness, who felt moved by the great privilege of this gift to be able to partake in it. And so she ran down the stairs and all the way up the aisle, knelt at the altar with her hands outstretched to the pastor, ready to receive this gift. 
And the pastor, a bit taken aback by the whole thing, looked at her and said, the choir goes first. Ouch. The choir goes first. I guess you like that, don't you? You agree with that. What a moment this preacher had to encourage and support this one, this homeless woman. But if we think about it, perhaps we've been like that pastor or like those in Corinth and haven't really thought about those all around us. God, forgive us. And may this holy meal participating in the Lord's Supper in power encourage us to be the hands and feet of Christ. This new week, may we go about seeking to invite someone who is a stranger and welcoming them in, or maybe to forgive someone who has wronged us, or maybe to help someone in a practical way this week. Because we have shared together in participating in the Lord's Supper, how will we live our lives more committed to Christ each day? Lloyd-Jones put it this way, that a Christian is someone who is amazed that they are forgiven. They never take that for granted. May sharing the bread and the cup give us a renewed awareness of what Christ has done for us. And may we live differently because we have participated together to, in sharing the bread and the cup in remembrance of him today. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's continue to prepare for the Lord's Supper by sharing together in our hymnal, starting on page 12. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. And we have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread gave thanks to you, broke the bread, 
gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. To Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Participating in the Lord's Supper, all are welcome in the name of Christ to come and to feast on our Lord's presence. And as you come, you're welcome to leave an offering here to help with the hurricane relief, it will go to Amcor. Let us come and share in remembrance of Christ.
Let us remember, as often as we eat this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us stand together and respond in faith and commitment our hymn invitation. I love to tell the story, hymn number 156.